A hockey puck is on horizontal frictionless ice. In each of these three scenarios, a horizontal force is applied on the puck, causing the puck's velocity to change. These figures show the top view of the puck's initial and the final velocities in each scenario. Rank the scenarios according to the work done on the puck, from the most positive to the most negative. Since the hockey puck is on horizontal frictionless ice, that means the exerted force on the puck is the net force. So we're comparing the work done by the net force. According to the work energy theorem, the work done by the net force is the change in kinetic energy. And the change in kinetic energy is the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy, which is also the final one half mv squared minus the initial one half mv squared. And we can factor out the one half m, and what's left is the v final squared minus the v initial squared. Because uh, we're talking about the same hockey puck, the mass is the same. That means uh, to compare the work done by the net force, we just have to compare this part. Another thing is that the kinetic energy is a scalar, which means uh, the direction does not matter. We just have to look at the speeds. In this particular case, the speed is either going from 2 to 3 or 3 to 2, which means we don't really have to plug in the numbers here. We can see that both B and the C, they have the same speed change from 3 to 2. So the answer for B and the C must be the same. They have the same amount of change in kinetic energy. And also for both of these, the speed decreases, which means the kinetic energy decreases. If the kinetic energy decreases, that means that delta K is negative. So B and C, they have equal change in kinetic energy, and both of these are negative. For A, the speed increases, that means the kinetic energy increases. So for A, the delta K is positive. The work done is positive. So A ranks first. It may seem weird that B and C involve the same amount of work, even though in C, the puck has to turn around. Now let's consider a simple one-dimensional process for C. At first, we can slow the puck down to 2 meters per second in the same direction. And that is the same as the scenario B. Then we have to make the puck turn around. We can first slow it down to a stop, which means that we have to take away all this puck's kinetic energy. But then we have to accelerate it in the opposite direction to 2 meters per second, giving the puck the same amount of kinetic energy back. So from this to that involves a network of zero. Therefore, scenario B and C have the same work done on the puck. Now let's rank the scenarios according to the magnitude of the impulse on the puck from high to low. We know that impulse is average force times time, and the impulse by net force is uh, the changing momentum. Because uh, it's a hockey puck on horizontal frictionless ice, so the exerted force on the puck is the net force on the puck. Therefore, the impulse is the changing momentum. And the changing momentum is m times delta v. It's the mass times the final velocity minus the initial velocity. Impulse, momentum, and the velocity, they are all vectors. So this time, we do have to consider the direction. Because we're looking at the same puck, the mass is the same. So to compare the impulse, we just have to compare the velocity change. Let's look at these two one-dimensional cases first. The delta V for B is the final minus the initial. If I say that way is positive, 
then this positive 2 minus the initial positive 3. So the delta V is negative 1. If I look at scenario C, that's final minus initial. And uh, if I say that way is positive, then that's negative 2, positive 3. So the delta V is the final velocity, negative 2 minus 3, which is negative 5. Because we're just ranking the magnitude of the impulse, so we're just looking at the magnitude of these two. So C has a larger magnitude for impulse than B. Now let's look at scenario A. The delta V is the final velocity minus the initial velocity. The final velocity is 3 that way. The initial velocity is 2. When we subtract vectors, it is the same as uh, we're adding a vector that is in the opposite direction. This way, 2. So we can add these two tail to tip, for example. It will be 3, 2. And the diagonal is the sum. This is the sum. And since this is a right triangle and this is the hypotenuse, so we know the hypotenuse is bigger than 2, bigger than 3, but it is not going to be bigger than 5. It's going to be less than 3 and 2 added together. Therefore, we know that when we compare the magnitude, C has the largest magnitude and A is between 5 and 3. So it's the next one and then it's uh, B. Of course, we could have used the Pythagorean theorem and find this exact value, but just to do the ranking, we don't really have to find the exact number, as long as we know it is less than 5 and bigger than 1.